Okay, so you couldn't possibly have thought friction was that easy, right? Um, it gets a little bit more complicated, and we're going to look at a problem here involving, you know, a penguin on an inclined plane, as exists in nature all the time. Um, and I say that kind of jokingly, but really, a hill is basically just an inclined plane, and uh, penguins love to rest on hills. I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, okay, so if you guys could turn to the slide that says penguin locomotion. It says penguins often assume a resting position on their bellies, as shown above. Given that both ice and their stomach feathers have a low coefficient of static friction, this can be hard to do without slipping, right? Poor penguins just want to like, slide down the hills all the time. Um, so the question is, if the coefficient of static friction for a penguin is about 0.17, what is the maximum angle of incline that a penguin can handle before it slides down a hill, okay? All right, what is the first step? Always draw a free body diagram. I knew you guys would get it. Okay, so here we go. Here is my free body diagram. I have some incline with angle theta, okay? And then upon this incline, I have a penguin. Is that almost a good drawing? What? How is that possible? Okay. And I want to talk about all my forces that are acting on Mr. Penguin over here, okay? Well, Things are more complicated now because we are dealing with an inclined plane, okay? How do we deal with this, right? So remember when I said you're always allowed to rotate the axis if it makes life easier, right? So here's what, he, you'll see what I mean. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say that there's, you know, a weight here, gravity, right? And I'm going to go ahead and say that, you know, there is a normal force acting like this, right? Why did I put it at this angle? Well, normal forces are always perpendicular to the surface at which they're applied. So if the surface is here, normal force has to be totally perpendicular so that that is a right angle, okay? Now, are we missing anything? The answer is obviously, right? Because gravity is going to make this guy want to slide down, right? This component of gravity that's in this direction is going to want to make this poor penguin slide down, right? And so what opposes that? The frictional force. What must be the direction? Well, opposite the motion that it wants to go. So you're going to have a frictional force, static friction, I'll put a little F, S for static friction, right? That applies up the plane right here, okay? Now, look at our situation. Two of our three forces are in this direction, in this direction. So it'll just make our lives a little bit easier if we call this x and this y, okay? And that's totally fine. We're allowed to do that, okay? And so that also means that this is our y-axis being continued. And so there's gonna be an angle here, theta, right? which happens to be the same angle as that angle, all right? And I'll leave it to you guys to prove that on your own, uh, to, to prove that to yourself. But whenever you're doing an inclined plane problem, the angle that the downward weight makes with this y-axis is always equal to, this, to the angle of the inclined plane, okay? So I'll, I'll give you that as given. All right, um, so what's next? Well, you guys know what's next. Always the same thing as next. You do your Newton's second law analysis. You make your two uh, equations. So I say the sum of my forces in X must equal to M A X, and the sum of my forces in Y must equal to M A Y. Okay? Well, what's going on in X? Okay, well, let's see. Remember, we're calling this X now, right? So we have in the positive X direction this frictional force here, Fs. So I'm just going to say Fs is positive. I'll put that there, right? And going in the negative x direction, well, we see that this weight here, it breaks up into two components. And I'm going to, I'm going to make, make this orange here. So it breaks up into a wy component, right? A component in the y direction, right? And a Wx component, right? Pointing in the negative x direction. But I can obviously slide this guy right up here. It makes, a it makes it a little bit more easier if I just look at it like this. 
So this is wx, OK? All right. Take that out of there. OK, so now what's going, what's going on in negative x? This wx component, right? So I put negative wx here equals, well, what's the deal? Is this guy moving? Well, we're talking about static friction, and we want to know the angle so that he doesn't move. And if he doesn't move, that means these forces must be balanced, meaning there's no acceleration in this case, and I could just put zero there, okay? Which means that our frictional force, our static friction, must simply be equal to the x component of the weight, okay? But what is the x component of the weight? Well, Remember, that is our angle right here, right? This is our little theta, right? And does this wx touch that angle? No, it's the wy that touches that angle, right? So the, remember, the component that doesn't touch the angle always gets the sign, right? So this is really w sine theta, okay? And remember, theta is what I'm looking for. What is the angle such that the, the, the maximum angle such that this guy doesn't slip, and if I make it any bigger than that, then the guy, the poor penguin, does start to slip. Okay, so we got that. <sighs> Next question, what is Fs? What is this static frictional force? Well, you guys know that. Frictional forces are always mu times n, okay? But I have a problem here. I don't know what this n is. I don't know what my normal force is, okay? And you guys are probably being like, oh, I'm so smart, I know, I know, n is always the weight. No, not when you have an angle like this. n is not always the weight, and I'm going to prove it to you right now. So let's do our, um, our little analysis for, this, for the forces in the y direction, okay? Well, what do we have going on in positive y? We have this n. Remember, y is this direction, right? So we have this positive n, right? And what do we have in negative y? Well, we have the y component of the weight, okay? So that y component of the weight is going to be minus wy. And then, again, this is balanced forces here, right? You guys see this? These guys are balanced. That's just zero, right? So that means that my normal force is really equal to wy, right? The y component of the weight. But remember, this component touches the angle, right? Which means that the normal force must equal to the weight times cosine of theta. Cool? Cool? You guys picking up what I'm putting down? Okay, now, that n can just be substituted into this n over here. So I have mu w cos theta equals w sine theta, right? But this w, it's just the weight of the penguin, right? These guys cancel right out, okay? And then I want to find this angle, right? right? But I have this cosine and sine. Never forget that if you see a cosine and sine and you have an opportunity to divide them, you can always get a tangent, which makes life easier. So in other words, mu over here will be sine theta over cosine theta, which, you know, remember from your like eighth grade trig class that this is actually just tangent theta, okay? And so, I want to find that angle. That's my, that's my guy right there, right? That is the angle such that these are balanced forces and this guy doesn't slip, okay? So what is that angle? Well, we said over here that the coefficient of static friction is just 0.17, right? So theta will be tan inverse of 0.17, and I get an, a degree of 9.65 for this. Okay, so what does this mean? That means that if this poor little penguin is on a slope that's any greater than 9.65 degrees, let's say a 10 degree slope, this guy is going to be sliding down, sliding down, sliding down, sliding down by a penguin.